Um, my name is Claire Scott. I'm the Ignite project manager and I'm based at the University of Strathclyde. Um, so I've got with me today Neha Chandarana, who is um, an Ignite co-investigator um, based at Bristol um, and leads the mentoring programme. I also have with me Jess Woodsford, um, who's co-director of Inclusive Futures, and who'll be talking about the action learning part of the programme. Um, so just a quick overview of how we're going to structure the session today. So um, I'll give a quick overview of the Ignite Network for those who are not familiar um, with the network. And then I'll hand over to Neha, who will talk about the mentoring programme. Um, and then Jess will talk about action learning and give an introduction about that. And then there'll be an opportunity for you to ask any questions. Um, and you can either put them in the chat as we're going along, or you can save them up and ask them at the end. Um, I've also put a link there to um, a Padlet that we used last year, which has lots of questions which are um, quite useful. I've put it in the chat. I hope everybody can still see the chat from before. Um, you can have a look on there as well. Um, and we'll add all the questions that you asked today into the Padlet as well so that you can go back um, and look at it. So just a bit about Ignite then. So Ignite is a 1.25 million EPSRC funded um, Network Plus project. Um, it started in September 2022, so we're halfway through the project now. There are seven co-investigators um, from six universities. Um, it's led by Professor Be Becky Lunn, who is the director based at Strathclyde. Um, Neha and myself and also Marco Reggiani, who's based at Strathclyde, will be involved in the matching process for the mentoring project. So I've just highlighted that there for everyone to see. Um, and just a bit about the aims and objectives of the network. So the network um, aims to create a diverse and inclusive energy research sector in which all individuals can thrive. And our goal through the network is to identify barriers at all stages, um, all career stages and innovate to remove them. Um, and what I've done is I've included some objectives there which link back to the prescribed activities, which I'll show um, in the next slide. Um, but you'll see number six there is mentorship, advice and advocacy, which is led by Bristol, as I said. Um, and then I've just put a, um, why do we need Ignite and some of the reasons why we need Ignite. So basically, we're trying to achieve net zero admissions by 2050. Um, and to do that, we need diverse groups of people um, to be able to increase innovation um, and bring greater scientific um, impact and improve economic growth. Um, and I've put some statistics there. Um, so for gender and ethnicity, and um, you'll see that we have quite a long way still to go. Um, so this is how the network is structured. Um, so in the centre, we have the network and community, which is the members of the network. Um, and around it, we have each of the um, universities um, uh, and each of those universities corresponds with a prescribed activity, which is a deliverable of the project. Um, there are seven deliverables um, from collecting baseline data and impact monitoring, which is led by Strathclyde, through to supporting working class energy researchers, which is led by the University of Manchester. Um, and at the bottom, you'll see that we have um, flexible funding. So about £500,000 of the funding was made available for flexible funding, and it was through two different schemes. Um, so there was um, EDI challenges um, where we had two calls and we now have seven funded projects. And the other one was to increase the number of diverse um, principal investigators and project leads in energy. And we've just funded three projects through that call. Um, all of the funding now um, calls have been completed, but you can find out all about all of the projects on our website and the link is just there. So it's just ignitenetplus.ac.uk. 
Um, so I spoke about membership. So we now have over 350 um, associate and full members. Um, and these um, cards here are from our members directory, um, which full members are invited to complete a profile um, to help with networking and collaboration. Um, and I would really encourage you, if you haven't done it already, if you complete a profile for the for the website. And I will now hand over to Neha, who is going to talk about the mentoring circles. Thank you, Claire. Um, so yeah, thank you uh, everyone for joining this morning. Um, so my name is Neha, as Claire said, um, I'm an academic based at the University of Bristol. Um, and I'm leading on the mentoring and advocacy um, prescribed activity for the project. So I'm really pleased that you've all joined today um, to hear a little bit more about the programme. So I just want to tell you a little bit about our motivation behind it um, and what, what we would like you to um, gain by taking part in the programme. Um, so taking part in this programme is absolutely free, um, just as joining the network is, as Claire has said. Um, and the aim of this, um, so we've called these mentoring circles. Um, what we want, would like to do in this mentoring um, prescribed activity is to introduce you to the concept of action learning and to work together in small groups um, to, uh, to basically reach your goals, um, whether that's in your career um, or other aspects of your work. Um, and the idea of um, circles, uh, mentoring circles and action learning sets is that um, it enables a, a group of people to come together um, to have conversations um, where you have a diverse um, collection of experiences um, and ideas. Um, and the idea is that we all work together in this action learning set to learn and develop together. So rather than your traditional um, mentor-mentee relationship where you would have one uh, potentially more experienced person and, and one person who's looking for mentoring, um, in an action learning setup, um, all of the participants are uh, taking part in the programme, so everyone is able to progress um, in their um, in their action learning journey. Um, and one of the benefits um, or some of the benefits of these um, action learning circles will be that you'll be able to connect with other individuals, not just one uh, mentor. Um, as I mentioned, there'll be um, really diverse perspectives in the room as well. It's also known to increase accountability when you work in groups. Um, and you'll also have the opportunity to learn from others um, while developing your own leadership, but also um, taking what you learn within this action learning set and promote change within your own organization or within your own working um, team. Um, could you go to the next slide, please, Claire? Thank you. Um, so this is the timeline for this year's um, Action Learning Circles programme. So um, hopefully, yet yeah, you will have uh, submitted an expression of interest. Um, and today we're having the briefing session. The next few um, things that will be happening are so after today's session. And as Claire mentioned, please do feel free to ask questions. Um, and we will, if we don't have time to answer them today, then we will get back to you um, with responses to those. Um, but if you if you like what you hear today, um, then we would encourage you to um, complete your profile application for the program. Um, and then following the um, closing date of applications, we will be looking at the applications that everyone's been that everyone has submitted, and we'll um, conduct a matching process to match you all into action learning sets. And you'll each be assigned a facilitator as well for your action learning set. Um, that will then be followed by an online training session, which will take place in January, where you'll um, have the opportunity to uh, practice taking part in an action learning set. Um, so that you follow the, the process. Um, and then what we'd like you to do within your action learning set and with your facilitator who will help you to organize um, your meetings um, is that between January and July 2025, you will meet for four to six meetings. Um, and after each meeting, we'll ask you to complete a short evaluation form just so that we can see how you're getting on. Um, for the facilitators, we may also organize um, additional check-in um, meetings just to see how you're getting on and see if there's any support that you would like from us as a team. Um, and then what we're hoping for is that when we get to September next year, we'll be able to have an end of program event where we bring everybody together, um, either online or in person, we'll be guided by um, what, what your preferences are. 
um, and then we'll be conducting our um, and we'll be conducting our evaluation all the way through. But obviously, once we get to the end of the program, um, we'll be able to complete that um, and make any changes for for the next cycle. Um, yeah, next slide, please, Claire. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so something that we've done uh, this year uh, for the program, which is a little bit different to last year, is we've put in some suggested dates for when you might want to meet with your action learning set. Um, please don't worry if these dates don't work exactly for you. Um, we are more than happy for you once you meet your action learning set and your facilitator. We're more than happy for you to um, amend these dates as per your availability. Um, but we put these in place just to give you a guide of when it might be useful for you to start meeting each other. Um, and uh, also you'll see on this uh, program dates um, table here that we are um, going to be hosting our next annual event for the Ignite uh, Network as well, which will be taking place at the end of April. Um, we're just in the process of finalizing the, the date and the location for that. Um, so if you um, participate in this program, then you'll also be invited to come along to that event. Um, if everyone's able to come along, then potentially we may also organize a, a specific um, sort of informal gathering for participants of the Action Learning Program. Um, so just watch the space for, for that. Um, and then, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, the final event will be in September. Um, we appreciate that everyone is based in different parts of the country. And so um, primarily all of your action learning uh, sets will take place online. But it will be great to um, see as many of you as possible at the, our annual event um, in person if you're able to make it. Thank you. Uh, so I think I'll now hand over to Jess. Hello, everybody. Um, right, I'm going to share um, share some slides and just talk you through a little bit more about um, what action learning is. Bear with me two seconds. Lovely. Is that showing? Wonderful. Okay. Uh, so just a quick um, uh, introduction to me. My name is Jess Woodsford. I'm from a, um, a not-for-profit community interest company called Inclusive Futures. We deliver um, coaching, training and um, facilitation. Um, and we particularly focus on supporting young people to pursue the future that's right for them. So a lot of our work is around social mobility. We work in schools and colleges and also with uh, current university students and also staff. Um, so what is action learning? Action learning uh, originated uh, from somebody called Red Revens, um, who's kind of the, the father of action learning. Um, and action learning is really about um, creating opportunities to um, to learn through taking action, to um, have an opportunity to talk through an issue that you've got, to find some solution, a solution or an action that you can take to go away and take that action and then bring that learning back to your group to help you unpack it. Um, and I really like this, this quote from Revens that there is no learning without action and no sober and deliberate action without learning. And actually, I think what's really lovely about that is it's getting to the crux of action learning, which is if you take action, regardless of the outcome, regardless of whether that action goes the way that you wanted it to or the way that you expected it to, there is always some great learning that you can take out of it. And that's what action learning is about. It's about helping you find the learning in the action that you take. Um, and it's also recognizing that people learn best when they are within groups and within groups of people that are in a similar situation to them. So that might be colleagues in the same position. It might be um, might be people that have a, a, a kind of point of a, a commonality that they can come together on to talk through an, a, an issue or a particular tough topic. And it's all based around asking big, open questions that enable you to look at things from different perspectives and to really encourage that, that reflection. Um, so what is it? It's a small group that meet, uh, that has a consistent membership. So um, as, as Claire and Neha said, you'd be, you'll be matched into a particular group and you stay with your group throughout the whole process. Um, and 
uh, what you do in those groups is um, each set member takes it in turn to talk through an issue that they that they are currently experiencing. So that might be a problem, that might be an opportunity, um, and they bring it to their group to talk through it. Um, each individual kind of reviews and reflects on where they are and explores the possibilities for taking action. What is the possible ways that they could overcome that challenge that they're facing? Um, and then they go away and they take action and then they bring that learning back to the group and talk through how that went. Um, and what's really interesting is sometimes with action learning, people might bring the same issue every week and uh, every session, sorry. Um, and you see a kind of progression for other people. They might bring a different sort of issue or a different topic every time they every time they speak. But the main thing is it's about having an opportunity to reflect and think about your challenge and find solutions to moving forward so that you can move forwards. And action learning is underpinned by some really key principles, which I wanted to just kind of go over with you. So first of all, it's about commitment. So um, when you're making a commitment to your, to your action learning set in terms of um, that accountability and punctuality and just coming along and being an active member of the group, your commitment is to your set. So you've got to remember that the, that your set members might be coming to your session, hoping that you're going to help them unpack something that's really quite challenging for them at that time. And they're, they're kind of relying on you to, to be there to support them through, um, through that process. And so that commitment to your, to your set is really important. Um, it's confidential. So that's really important as well, that within your group, the content stays within within your group. You can take your learning out and you can talk about what you've learned from the experience, but other people's issues and the content of anyone that anyone discusses stays within the group. It's also a judgment-free space. This isn't about going in and telling somebody how you think they should do something or whether you think that they should or shouldn't be worrying about the thing that they're worrying about. This is about creating a judgment-free space where we can explore and think out loud. Um, we ask questions rather than give advice in action learning. And I think that's probably the thing that people find the most challenging when they first get into action learning, because we're so used to jumping in and giving ideas um, and sort of kind of giving our own share, our kind of own experience on something. But what we're doing in action learning is we're asking questions so that the person who's bringing their challenge can find the right solution for them. Now, we do make sure there is space within action learning to kind of share resources or um, give that kind of really key nugget. But we do it in a kind of contained space so that it's it's got its place in the process. Um, you set actions and goals. Uh, that hopefully feel a little bit stretching and are going to kind of push you a little bit outside your comfort zone. Um, but they should be achievable um, actions that you're taking. Um, and the other thing is that in action learning, you learn about learning. So um, the the kind of just taking part in action learning, people gain a lot of insight into um, how they learn, what helps them to take action. So so there's there's a number of levels to kind of the learning and reflections that you get. So I'm going to talk you through the the kind of action learning process, and it will probably look a little bit complex when I kind of when I talk through it now. But um, as as Claire and Neha said, there's some training that will be coming in January where we'll unpack this in more detail. And I promise once you get used to the process, it works really well. So um, in an action learning um, set, you have these kind of key parts of the agenda that you go through. So you start with a check in and that's just everyone's opportunity to kind of come into your virtual space, um, say how they are on that day and to let you know if there's anything particular that they might they might need in order to kind of be fully present um, in the in the action learning session. Um, next, we go to it. To, we start agreeing an agenda, and what we mean by that is we ask who in the group would like to bring an issue to discuss in that session. Um, not everybody will always want to or need to kind of have um, some time to talk through an issue, but once we know who wants to, um, who wants some time, we then divide the time up equally between um, those people. 
Next, we do a progress update. So this is where we hear about the learning that's kind of taken place since the last session. So reflecting on the action that you have taken. And then after that, we go to the individual time, which is when um, an individual set member unpacks their issue. And so in that individual time, we have a we have a structure as well. So first of all, that um, that set member will tell you very briefly about their about their issue. Now, this is only like two minutes, maybe. Um, and actually, what's really key in this issue in when somebody's sharing their issue is you don't need to go into tons and tons of detail. You just need to tell your group enough that they can ask you some good questions to help you unpack it. Next, we have clarifying questions. So that's where your group um, can ask you just some very, uh, some direct questions if they just need to know uh, some really key bits of information in order to, uh, or in order to ask you those more open questions. That might be something like, oh, how many people are in your team? Or how long have you been in that, that job? Or how long's that project been going on for? So that they, so they've got that kind of key information. And then once we've done that, we go into the lovely open question frame. And so what we're doing there is asking big open questions. So those are questions that start with things like where, who, how, things like that, um, that help people open up thinking and look at things from different perspectives. And after we've asked those open questions, we then uh, get the in the um issue holder to agree some actions and then we reflect on that um on that sort of uh individual time as a whole and so we do that for every person that's bringing an issue um in that session and then to close off the action learning we do a process review and that's when we look at the kind of session as a whole and how it went and think about our so we set a group agreement in the first session which is kind of our expectations of how the group is going to run and we can use that to just check in on how we're doing and whether we're still uh kind of conducting the action learning um as as we expected and if there was anything that was particularly hard or particularly challenging in that session that we want to unpack um and i talked a bit there about bringing an issue and i think one of the questions we often get is what is a good issue to bring to action learning so um a good issue is something that is a kind of a problem or a challenge or an idea or an opportunity that you aren't sure how to tackle and it'd be really useful to, to get some other people to help you explore it. Um, it should be something that's important to you, something that you want to take action on and you want to move forward with. Um, it should be something that you have the ability to take action on. Um, so if we go really big and really kind of um, meta and we go for things that are kind of outside of, of our control, it's really hard to find. And it can be really hard to find an action. So it's about something, um, something that is within your control to take action on. And also a great issue to bring to action learning is something where there isn't a really obvious right answer. Um, where it can be where there are a couple of different ways you could approach it so that it gives you an opportunity to explore those different um those different um those different options um now like i said that probably all sounds a little bit complex but i promise by the end of the training it will um it will all make sense um and i will uh i will be at the training to do that and if you have any questions kind of following the training then you can um you can let me know and i will answer your questions okay that's me done thank you jess that's lovely does anybody have any questions that they would like to ask either myself or jess unfortunately neha has had to leave um, for another meeting, um, but if there's any specific that you want to ask Neha, we can follow up with her. No, no questions at this time. Hi Claire, may I ask a question? Of course, yes, hi. Hi, thank you. Um, my understanding is uh, kind of my role or our role is a facilitator. facilitator. Yep. Yes, so uh, for these uh, four to six meetings, uh, my question is about for these four to six meetings, are they all following this uh, action learning kind of format or 
it's yeah um, yeah so, so the first meeting um after the training will be more of an introduction so we kind of put an extra meeting in because last year um, we found that the first meeting where you kind of set up the contract, so that's what you, what you agreed, how you agreed to, um, you know, meet with one another. And so you do that, you introduce one another a bit about your background. So the first meeting is really just a kind of getting to know one another. And then the four to six meetings after that um, are about the action learning. So each meeting and what we'll do is... Um, we're going to send out a little pack of reminding people that before you come to a meeting to prepare an issue. So try and think about preparing for the meeting before you turn up at the meeting. Don't just turn up without mm. thinking about it um, because mm. you really want to make the, the most of that time that you that you know that you've you've got together. So yeah, yeah hope that yes. answered. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Just a follow up question on this is uh, for each meeting, I know everybody need to bring uh, one issue, probably they need to think about it uh, in yeah. advance. Is there kind of an overall topic? I know it's uh, the whole Ignite is about net zero. So it's should yeah. be there or kind of any like a career development problem or anything. It it can be anything. It could be that you're working on a funding application and you have something that you want to talk about. It could be, what, what, what we'll try and do is what people, last time round we matched people based upon what their interests were. So mm -hmm. if people were interested in um, more in networking, then we kind of put people together that were interested in networking. If people were interested in looking for funding opportunities, we put them together. Um, if people were trying to develop in their career, then you know that was more of an interest for them. So so people will be, well, as much as we can, we'll try and match people with what their interests are. And then really it's up to the individual to come with an issue that could be anything really that helps them progress. So, yeah, I don't know Thank if you want much. to add, do you want to add anything, Jess? Um, I was just going to say, um, as a facilitator in those action learning sets, um, I suppose your first kind of job is to help just guide people through that through that process and to kind of be mindful of where you are um, in that process and to also make sure that everyone gets a fair pe a fair um, amount of time so um, action learning is really based on equity and ensuring that everyone has equal and fair space within um, within the group um, but also as a facilitator you can still absolutely ask questions and actually a nice part of the of being a facilitator in action learning is modeling open questions so you you join in the the um the kind of open question part as well you can ask questions to help people um reflect but it's timekeeping and mm -hmm. guiding people around around the around the process and kind of keeping your eye on that on that process so that everyone gets a fair opportunity to to bring an issue mm -hmm. and what you often find is not everyone will bring an issue every time mm -hmm. um so if you've got a group of five often you only have two or three people that want to bring an issue. And then it's quite nice because then they get a bit more time per person. Um, or you might sometimes have it that everyone's like, yeah, we've all got something we want to talk about. And then it's a bit more quick fire and it's, and it's a slightly short, they obviously have less time per person, which is why that kind of agenda setting bit is quite nice to just unpack who wants some time um, so that you can ensure that everyone gets um, equal equal space. Yeah. I assume we don't bring any issues, no, <laughs> ourselves, no. No, not usually. The facilitator wouldn't usually have a uh, have time within that um within that space, but absolutely kind of gets involved with asking the questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um. What? So. Um. This um, um, launch meeting is for those uh, who want to act as a facilitator or as uh, as uh, mentees. So the 16th of January, the training is for everybody. So mm. it really gives you more of an in-depth um, about how the process works, how to develop a contract. I don't know, Jess will be able to give a bit more information. But yes, everybody is welcome to come um, to the meeting on the 16th of January. And Jess, I don't know if you want to talk a wee bit more about about that. Yeah, so we'll, we'll go over 
sort of the importance of setting a group agreement, um, which is kind of something that's really key to do in your first session. But mainly the training will give you an opportunity to practice using some of the key skills that we use in action learning, which is around open questions and ensuring that we're asking questions rather than going in going into advice giving, which is the bit that most people find hardest, or just trying to figure out how to make their questions open so that they um, sort of encourage conversation. So we'll um, go over the action learning process in a bit more detail and then have a go. So go in some breakout rooms and just have a go at playing around with those open questions um, so that when you go into your first action learning set, you kind of know what it's about and you've kind of got those questions. You've had a bit of a bit of a practice um, so that you can make the most of those, they, um, the kind of sessions when you go into them. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, just but my second question is like in terms of um, um, group, how many uh, people uh, you know should be expecting? Are we expecting like two or three people, or it could be more than uh, you know? How, what is the normal strength of the group? So normally it's between four and five participants in a group although last year we did have a smaller group just because of the way um, the, the interests that people had and the numbers that we had we did have a smaller group that was two participants and one facilitator which worked actually quite well but the, there are some issues with that and you know if someone's not able to attend a meeting then you've only got the it kind of becomes a mentor mentee um, approach rather than um, an action learning set so we do try and make them a wee bit bigger um, between four and five participants in each set thank you <clears throat> okay thank you um any other questions no. Give people a moment. Um, so I'll just direct you back to the Padlet um, again. There's lots of questions in there that people um, last year had asked um, and we put them in there and I'll put the questions that were asked this time in there that um, you can refer back to and also the people that weren't able to attend today. So the next thing after this is um, today I will circulate a link to the profile application and that should be submitted by the 18th of November. Um, and following that, um, the applications, we will um, do the matching and we'll let everybody know the sets by the 6th of December and then the training will take place on the 16th of January. And if you could try and make sure that you put the dates in your diary that we set for the meetings, um, at least to hold them um, and then when the sets are put together you can discuss whether those dates suit everybody but at least it gives us a, a start in getting the meeting set up. Um, so I just want to say thank you very much. Thank you Jess um, and Neha who's obviously um, who has left now but and thank you everybody for coming along today um, and I look forward to, to seeing you again in, in January. Take care and have a... Thank a lovely, you. a lovely Monday. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.